Dispatch all aircraft anchored to information whiskey current anchored to altimeter 2961. Hello and welcome to this episode of FS Mania. Today we are located at the Kenai Municipal Airport in southern Alaska. Preparing to fly the Coronado version of the Hawker 850 XP to one of the most remote places in North America. The Aleutian Islands extend about 1,200 miles from the Alaskan Peninsula into the Bering Sea. Despite its enormous size, the chain of more than 300 volcano islands has just over 8,000 inhabitants, most of them living on Unalaska Island. There is a reason why the small town of Unalaska is known further than you would expect for a city located in no man's land somewhere between the U.S. and Russia. Its port facilities, Dutch Harbor. A mile-long spit extending from the southwest of Amanak Island makes Dutch Harbor a natural port, protecting ships from the waves and currents of the Bering Sea. Dutch Harbor is close to some of the richest fishing in the world. With over 250 rainy days a year, constant fogs, heavy crosswinds floating over the mountains from the Bering Sea, and average winter temperatures that stay well below freezing, it is enough to trouble even the most experienced pilots. And if the weather conditions are not challenging enough, the high mountains on almost all sides of the airport force the pilot to fly a difficult circling approach with a tight turn to line up with the 4,500 foot long runway. This is our second flight video in the Hawker 850 XP. I will say she has proven to be a hard lady to get to know. However, I have learned a few tricks that help me to fly the jet with a little more confidence in the flight guidance system. One of those tricks involves the installation of a new piece of navigation equipment that will be featured in part two of this video, so be sure to stay tuned for that video coming very soon. Okay, climb aboard, buckle up, and let's go fly to Dutch Harbor. And good evening and welcome aboard FS Mania's flight from Kanai to Dutch Harbor, Alaska. Our flight today is a 650 nautical mile flight and flight time should be about one hour and 45 minutes. We've got 900 gallons of Jet A in our wing tanks so we got enough fuel to get there and the weather right now in Dutch Harbor is about 18 miles visibility. Um, actually they're forecasting about a 2600 foot overcast at the time of our arrival. Wind should be calm so hopefully we got a pretty good chance of making it in there uh, without too much trouble. And we're going to be flying uh, in on a GPS approach so we'll talk about that in route. And uh, right now we're just going to go ahead and get this thing fired up. And basically I do want to redeem a few things that um, from my first video on this Hawker that uh, mostly my mistakes. I'm going to try to be a little bit uh, kinder and gentler with um, Carnado and um, basically fly the airplane for what it is. So um, but let's get up things fired up. Let's get overhead here and let's get our batteries on and put our isolate battery in the normal position. Our external charge, external power uh, switches are off and let's cut on some lights up here. Lights here. There we go. And a couple things um, starting off with. We cut these ignitions off. They. This is the way it loads up. So these are um, engine computers in the off position and engine sync is off. Everything's off over here in the anti-ice. Let's get our nav lights on, seatbelt sign on, and we'll start up our APU. Sure I didn't miss anything there. And before I do that though, we'll go ahead and start these. Cancel that. We'll get our glare shield lights on, panel lights, three position, one position there, display lights, one position, console panel three position that's the overhead and the pedestal light three position and our flood light there there we go let's get our APU going so let's see we'll do a fire test that seems to be working we'll check our enunciators here everything's lit up cut that back off and let's we'll start her up here turbines spooling up. Exhaust gas temperature is rising. And we should get an indication here when it's ready to load. 
There it is. We'll cut the bleed air on. And let's go back to our overhead panel now. And let's bring our air conditioning up into the auto position. And we'll open, cut on our fan, cabin fan, circulation fan. And actually not there, I'm sorry. Uh, here we go. And open up the vents there. So that takes care of all of those things. Nav lights are on. And let's arm the emergency lights here and everything else is as it should be up here i'm doing an abbreviated startup if you want to see a complete startup be sure to check out the first video in this series and we did that there so um, let's go ahead and come over here we'll cut on our passenger oxygen well, actually our oxygen supply i think really passenger oxygen is back there cabin oxygen and doesn't seem to be modeled so we'll assume it's on and everybody back there can breathe and coming down here you see our cabin high datum switch is deselected let's cut on our standby instruments there and i'm going to unarm our thrust, thrust reverser thrust reverser for present the apr isn't selected and our radio masters are on so let's go ahead and get our flight plan punched in here really quick um, I did learn uh, yeah a few tricks on this that are going to help us out some fly it a little bit more gracefully so um, first thing we want to do is get our position initialized so we are currently in Kanai at Papa Alpha Echo November and that's right there and let's go into our flight plan and the first waypoint on that flight plan is Tux so let's put that in here. Where's uniform? There it is. Charlie, Kilo, Sierra, Tux. And we'll put two on there. Then we're going to go to the next page. And we're going to use Jet Route 115. So we'll put that in. And that's going to take us all the way to Cold Bay. And that identifier is Charlie Delta Bravo. Yes, Charlie Delta Bravo. So that goes in right there. And then from there, we're going direct to Morty intersection, which is where we'll start our GPS approach into Dutch Harbor. And so let's put that in, direct Morty. That looks good. Uh, let's see now, which one is it? It's this one right here. It's the second one. Pretty sure that's right. And then from there we'll go to, uh, right now we'll put in Dutch Harbor, which is Papa Alpha Delta Uniform. Now let's go back and just check our legs and see if everything makes sense. So these are all the waypoints along the jet route. Let's go to the next page. We'll fix the um, flight levels. Uh, once we get up airborne for the, uh, the descent. Actually, um, if I haven't already told you, uh, what we're going to do is en route, I'm going to actually upgrade and we're going to put in uh, a new unit right here for the approach. Um, and I'll talk more about that uh, once we uh, get up and get en route. But uh, yeah, we're going to do some um, upgrades just because I want to show you some other capabilities that this airplane has. But for right now, let's see, Cold Bay, yes. Morty and there's Dutch Harbor and let's see checking these distances they all look good so I think we're good there we'll go back to um, first page of our legs and we'll call that ready while we're down here just checking dump valve is closed and let's slide over here and we'll set, go ahead and set our pressurization we're going to be flying today at uh, flight level 380, ultimately. And I'm going to set the cabin altitude for 8,000 feet. It will maintain that just fine. And let's check our altimeter setting here. Um, I checked the weather earlier, and the altimeter is 29 or 9 or 5. So 
I'm just going to use the B key, take a shortcut, and let's just see if that, that was accurate. 299 or 2. Okay, close enough for me. Uh, forecast or the weather, my weather report said 299 or 5, but things do tend to change, so we'll leave that where it is. And let's just take a peep over here at our fuel. So we've got 6,000 pounds, a little better uh, fuel on board. That looks good. Let's go overhead and we want to be sure everything's ready. So we're going to go ahead and get our engine started up. So we'll start engine number two first and we'll go ahead and cut on that ignition, that engine computer. Let's bring it on and fuel pump comes on. Everything's good there. Let's bring on our beacon indicate that we're getting ready to start bring on some start power and let's fire up the starter and we're looking for N1 coming up N2 is coming up and bring on the fuel and let's watch for the light and there's the light the oil pressure's coming up the oil pressure light's gone out Got a good start there. Starter's disengaged and we're ready to repeat for number two. Go ahead and cut that ignition off. Bring this one on, this fuel pump on, and this engine computer on. And let's hit the starter. It's spinning up. Bring on the fuel. Watch for the light. Oil pressure starting to build. There it comes. We've got the light. Lights out there. Come back up here. Starter's disengaged. Cut that power off. And now let's go ahead and bring our alternators online. We got all our lights out up there except for our anti-ice. And we can go ahead and shut down our generator. So we'll cut that bleed air off. Hit our stop button, bring the switch down actually to there, and we'll let that go ahead and wind down. And before taxi, we'll go ahead and set our altimeter up to, I mean our altitude select. We're going to go ahead and take it up to flight level 140, which is our initial assigned altitude. Okay, so I've got an indication there, out select mode, and I'm going to take off, actually, um, we'll use the pitch wheel to bring that up, about a 2,000 foot a minute climb, you can see that raised the flight director bar up, and then we're going to switch over and use the flight level change mode once we get up to 250 knots, so that should work out just fine, and we'll start out with uh, heading mode, and then we'll switch over to nav mode, so Everything looks good there, and our trims are all set, and uh, just check our, yep, pitch trim looks good, and let's go ahead and get 10 degrees, or our first notch of flaps, which I think actually are 15 degrees, and check our flight controls here, well, we've got our head down, everything's got a full range of movement. Our thrust reversers are off, and we'll go ahead and get our taxi lights on, and let's taxi out to runway one left. So the first notch right there. Park and brake off. Clear on the left. Clear on the right. Just a short little taxi here to the end of 
the runway and we'll be out of here pretty soon. Definitely going to have a challenging approach and landing at Dutch Harbor. So there is something that um, is of the utmost importance that I need to set on the primary flight display and it caused me uh, to have some issues with the um, managing the autopilot and so uh, my bad because uh, well part of the, the issue of course that I have said many times is that there is a sort of a lack of documentation with this airplane and so uh, you do have to tend to figure things out uh, by doing uh, a ton of research and um, yeah better documentation would certainly help and um, but that's what you you know what you're getting when you get into one of Coronado's new releases and so you know you accept that or either just don't buy it I suppose and um, but uh, they, they do tend to make nice looking products and so you know, people tend to buy them and they are fun to fly they're typically e fairly easy to fly uh, they're just hard to, to learn the, especially the more complex ones but what we need to do is um, down here there's uh, a menu down here that we need to access and what we're going to do is use the refs key to do that and you can see that brings up all our V refs that are already fine they're automatically calculated for us based on weight so we're not going to mess with any of those but there's another menu that will bring up right here and if you look in here there's one item that's called flight alert uh, on off and that is what's going to help us to level off properly at the right altitude using flight level change so I need to switch it because it's right now on off so to do that there we go so it moved it over to being cyan on the on so I can select that there and now that is in the on position so if we go back around and look at it get back down there make sure it is selected it's indicating that it's on so the default is off and if you forget to cut it on then the autopilot will fly right through the altitude that's what I found that worked and yeah that seemed to work so let's get rid of a couple of other of these lights here let me just set this brake and go back here and cut this off uh, that's the wrong way there we go I thought I hit that stop button already that's why I had that light going so it's winding down I thought I hit the stop button earlier and I just needed to flip off the master and the ice protection overhead we'll get that on so we're going to use our screen heat and our pitot heat now all of our lights are off up here all we need now is let's get our landing lights all the way on let's bring on our strobe light and we can use daytime here we'll use our um, our pulse beacon there which basically just um, pulses our our landing lights and looks kind of cool and so we're ready to go here let me just double check and be sure I missed a couple items we better less not less we forget let's arm the automatic power reserve let's bring our thrust reversers on armed and our rudder bias down here we could check it I know it's good we're gonna not worry about that and let's see engine ignition we should bring that on procedurally that one was on there we go now we got them both on just for takeoff and now all of our light strobes everything is on crew alerting system on considered everything ready to go so let's get the brakes off and get out there we're going to be actually taking off in the opposite direction that we need to go so we're going to be doing a u-turn turn out to the left
right let's just hold right there and I want to go ahead and do uh, a couple other quick things procedurally to help us manage our auto uh, flight our autopilot we're going to sync up our heading bug and we're going to arm the heading mode so it's armed out select is armed and our flight director we want that on 2000 let me get in here and make sure I've got that set where I want it yep let's come up just a little bit more about 2,000 feet a minute on the uh, vertical speed on the climb out to begin with initially okay then we're gonna go over to the flight level change and set the speed using the speed knob and one thing I better do is we go down here and tune in and put in our squawk code so we'll be picked up by Anchorage Center on the way out of here okay that looks good and flight director is showing what I want it to show so we're ready to go here I'll bring our power up let everything stabilize right around 40 50 percent check all our gauges in the green everything looks good brakes coming off power levers coming full forward Airspeed's alive. There's V1 and rotating, pulling the yoke all the way back. Gears coming up. flight director let's go ahead and bring on the yaw damper autopilot and we'll go ahead and get our flaps up let's bring on our main air valves flight deck heat valve watch our speed climb and we're going to go ahead and start a left turn out. Get out of the pattern. We'll do about a 45 degree turn out and gain some altitude. And then we'll turn on course. Speed's coming up through 200. And about 240 knots or so is where we want to go ahead and engage that flight level change. Flaps did come up. There's 220, build speed rapidly. It's Cook Inlet. And there's 240, we'll go ahead and hit that flight level change. So you can see our speed set right there. The flight director is indicating a, a nose pitching up to keep that speed in that range, 240, 250 knots. And let's bring our heading on around on course climbing through 3,000 feet. We're above the pattern. So I'll just get us around here. We can intercept that course. And the digital engine computers are taking care of our thrust settings. So pretty much we can just do, go ahead and do our after takeoff checklist. Gears up. Main air valves are open. Y'all dampers engaged. Airspeed is set and collapse up and we can disarm our automatic power reserve and anti-ice is already set and let's just check our engine gauges everything looks good and we'll say goodbye to Kana.
So let's just take a look. We're holding around 250 knots, so we're not going to get busted by the air traffic control police. And we are uh, right now in our heading mode using flight level change. Speed set on 245. Coming up through 10,000 feet, we'll go ahead and get off our landing lights. Bring those off. And we'll go ahead and let the passengers move out of the cabin. And I just got a call from ATC and they cleared us on up to flight level 280. So we're going to go ahead and dial on up to 280. So now that we have, bring that down, the hundreds down, there we go. I don't know if you can see the numbers over here as I'm scrolling through, but yeah, now that we have um, figured out the little trick over here of setting the flight level um, altitude alert, uh, hopefully we will be getting, I see we have a message, and it's probably telling me we don't have enough fuel but I'm expecting that to change once the ground speed changes and let's go back here look at the message yeah it's saying check fuel we're good I've checked it go back to the legs page and we're on the way to Dutch Harbor should be a fun flight We are approaching our own course line, so we're just going to go ahead and start a little turn to the right, and we'll go ahead and activate the nav mode. So we're now tracking the FMS, and I just got a call from ATC, and they want us to level off at flight level 210 for some traffic. So this will give us a good chance to check out to see how well the autopilot and flight management system works. So I've dialed us back down to 210. So we should get an, an alarm at an alert at flight level 200 and we ought to be able to certainly um, see the airplane level off. And let's see, we need to go ahead and get our en engine sync on to get that. And we just went through flight level 180, so we'll go ahead and go to standard on our altimeter setting. And now let's go in and see how we're doing. So we want to be leveling off here at flight level 210. And we're on course to Tux, 24 nautical miles away. And we should be getting an alert about right now. Excellent. And since we are above the uh, 10,000 feet, we could go ahead and start increasing our speed. And that would actually start helping to lower our nose down a little bit. And it may assist in the leveling off. So it kind of wants to balloon a little bit, maybe porpoise a little bit, but we'll see how it does here. Might should have left well enough alone, we'll see. We're doing 300 feet a minute in the climb right now and coming right up 200. So yeah, we're going to level off and our speed is going to climb now and as we're level at flight level 210 so that worked out pretty nice and we either need to reduce speed here or we're going to definitely um, starting to see some of the volcanoes in the Aleutian Island chain here we're definitely going to over speed but I just got the okay to go ahead and climb on up to flight level 280 so we'll go ahead and dial that in and way too far there there's 280 and I can see we started the climb I'll go ahead and get us climbing up a little bit uh, faster you can see our speeds getting close over here let's go ahead and 
engage that flight level mode we'll keep it down and then we can just dial that speed up and down as we want to there's uh, right now at 338 knots is what we're indicating and good rate of climb going but we can change that just by using the speed knob and let's say we want to keep it at 300 knots then we'll just bring it down and I would do this slowly because the airplane tends to exaggerate when it starts to go for pitch changes but uh, there's 330 knots let's just stay right there and now we're just moving on up pretty nice to flight level 280 at 330 knots commanded and everything is just great so oh there's looks like the moon coming up over there that's cool and we're looking at Cook Inlet and the Gulf of Alaska along. and then this is the Aleutian Island chain, the beginning of them, right here, about 1,200 miles long, uh, pretty remote. Uh, there's, um, I think I've probably already said, only about 8,000 people that live out here, so if you want to get away, good place to come. And um, so what we're going to do is we're going to end this part uh, right here, and uh, we're going to go ahead and continue climbing on up. And, uh, we've got a long way to go, so we'll come back on um, the descent. And when we do, um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to upgrade this uh, multifunction display to a Garmin uh, GTN 750 touchscreen navigator, uh, courtesy of modification, courtesy of a gentleman named Bert Piquet, who is a uh, legend in my mind, at least, from uh, AvSim, and he also. Um, works with some other forums as well but um, see him his name appear quite often in the absent forums and um, he's basically a master at uh, taking these um, airplanes particularly the Coronado airplanes and um, modifying uh, some of the coding in there to fix things that maybe aren't exactly accurate and um, extremely nice gentleman and very very helpful uh, if you ever need to have questions or need problems or have problems he's certainly um, does uh, more than his share of taking care of folks so um, yeah when we come back we're going to have uh, Bert's uh, modification modified GPN and that's what we're going to use for approaching into Dutch Harbor for um, actually for managing our descent into Dutch Harbor and uh, so that should be interesting to see uh, how the airplane will fly um, with the GTN 750 is just another option that you've got and um, yeah so that's what we're going to do and until then though I'm going to go ahead and end this part and sign off and say thank you very much for watching appreciate you being here hope you'll join me on part two there's 1000 to go until then from FS Mania so long Bravo X-ray Bravo turn right heading 080. Right turn 080.